Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fantify Live Demonstration and Corporate Up webinar. This is uh, Will Mays from RBMG. Fantify is listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange under the symbol FDM and on the OTCQB under the symbol FDMSF. Joining us today is the company's president and CEO, David Vinikrov, uh, who will be providing an update on the company's current operations and upcoming milestones, and Joshua Neely, who will be providing a demonstration of Fantify's prediction and engagement platform. At the end of the presentation, we'll open up for questions for management to address, and if you're interested in asking a question or logged into the Zoom app, you can submit your questions directly into the Q&A module. Please note this presentation is being recorded today, Thursday, August 11th, 2022, and will soon be made available on the company's website at fandify.com. Today's call may contain forward-looking statements that are subject to risk, uncertainties that may cause actual results, performance, or developments to differ materially from those contained in the statements and are not guarantees of future performance of the company. No assurance can be given that any of these events anticipated by forward-looking statements will occur, or if they do, what benefits the company will obtain from them. Also, some risks and uncertainties may be out of control of the company. Fantify has a full disclaimer on page two of their presentation. Lastly, RBMG is not a registered investment advisor or broker-dealer. For more information, please visit rbmilestone.com. And now it is, uh, I'll hand it off to David and Joshua. Gentlemen, the stage is yours. Thank you, Will. I'd like to thank everybody for joining uh, our presentation today. Our existing shareholders, potential new shareholders, uh, partners, and potential new partners as well. So we're very excited to uh, give you an update of what we've been working on and you know, lift the curtain so that you can all see it for yourself. Uh, as Will mentioned, uh, there will be some forward-looking statements. I'll save you all the grief of having to go through this heavy-duty slide, but uh, we'll get right into it. So, you know, Fandify is where entertainment meets engagement. You capture, create, and curate fan engagement with your favorite form of entertainment, regardless of medium, regardless of the type of content. You know, the trends that we're seeing in social media, in broadcasting, really are a wind in our backs. You know, we see a tremendous fall-off in TV viewership across all demographics. We see, at the same time, we see a rise in streaming adoption, again, across all major demographics. Furthermore, what we also see is a drop in viewership of uh, major league sports, again, across all major demographics. So, you know, in my opinion, what we're seeing is a convergence of macroeconomic and social factors that are changing the way that people view and interact with broadcast and stream content. And that, that's what we're looking to capitalize on. Uh, just to give you a couple of basic statistics on that, you know, Western streaming platforms reached 8.8 .8 billion hours of stream content in Q1, which is an 80% increase year over year. Over 55 year olds viewing live TV and television is declining. 18 to 34 year olds watch 23.4% less live TV in 2020 versus 2019. And streaming platform viewership has more than doubled in just the past three years. You know, I think uh, Disney uh, streaming platform has just gained about over 130 million new customers within the last 12 months alone. You know, in terms of the size and the scope of the opportunity that we're addressing with our Fandify platform, you know, there's 44 million live views received every minute on Facebook. 164 million videos are watched every single minute on TikTok. 694,000 hours of video are streamed every minute on YouTube, and there's 1.2 million people creating content every day on Twitch. So when you couple that with the fact that we see a convergence in the types of content that are being created, content creators are creating the same short form video content, which now averages about 10 minutes per session on all of the prop platforms simultaneously. So if, when we consider what we saw on the previous slide with the precipitous drop off in sport in live sports viewing, which is you know really the main engine driver for uh, TV viewership and revenues, uh, the chart on the bottom right sums that up quite easily. Why we see that, you know, uh, the bars that you see in the middle for NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, etc., that is the amount of time that announcers spend talking throughout the stream. This is when people's attention starts to, to waver when they're watching a sporting event. So the question is, how do we engage people throughout that time to make them more engaged, obviously increasing engagement for the broadcaster, which ultimately would lead to higher ad revenues for the broadcaster and making it a better experience for the fans. And that's something that we are uh, looking to address with our platform. 
So we're a new social engagement tool built for creators and fans that enables deeper connections with live content. We've built a leading fan engagement prediction technology that enables and rewards users for being the biggest and the wisest fans. Our platform turns casual gamers into super fans and keeps them engaged throughout the entirety of the content of, of the uh, broadcast content. Uh, the technology that we built is purpose built in house on top of our own unified information access platform. Uh, it is web based. Uh, what's called a progressive web app that operates uh, both on Android and iOS mobile devices. And it allows uh, super fans to predict on infinite outcomes on any type of streamed or broadcast content, which Josh will show you a little bit later on. We really sit at the intersection of uh, fan engagement, uh, fans, creators, and our goal is to really change the way that people are interacting with streamed and broadcast content. You know, right now, today, Everyone is watching me and listening to me the same way they would be watching or listening to their favorite show or their favorite sports cast. Uh, the only other way you can interact with that is, you know, you may or may not tweet about it. We're really looking to change that whole paradigm to allow people to swipe left, swipe right, interact with things that are going on in real time, pre-match for sports as well in these sports. And to actually not only engage with the content creators better, but to provide a new tool for content creators to engage with their fans better and ultimately have new revenue streams. Uh, you know, the way that Fandify earns money is through in-platform power-ups that people can purchase to engage with the content uh, in higher ways than most people would if they were just to play along for free. There's integrated advertising and brand sponsorship capability, uh, sports, gaming, product, and entertainment engagement. And ultimately, we're able to aggregate all of the usage metrics uh, through the various different types of content buckets and provide those useful data metrics back to uh, the content creators themselves. Now, our technology is built on our unified information access platform. That works with a associated neural network that allows us to ingest data from different types of sources, uh, data streams for sports and esports. Uh, it allows us to find similarities within those data streams so that we can present system generated predictions as they're coming out of the data stream, create event alarms, and then trigger responses for people to swipe left, swipe right, interact with the predictions in real time and then sort collate that data and be able to present that in actionable uh, interfaces with our content partners. So what we offer our fans is the ability to be seen as a top fan. It allows us to engage with the content and be rewarded for that content, uh, you know, through leaderboards, uh, through streaming, messaging, various social interactions with other similar minded super fans uh, and create engagement uh, with, with the stars, the teams, the athletes and the content. You know, for our partners, it allows deeper access to audience data, access to new audiences, because we can see in the data, for example, if someone is, you know, playing along with a lot of NBA 2K games, we can potentially steer them to NBA games as well and, and promote that type of uh, engagement. And then ultimately revenue sharing capabilities. Anybody that would come in, if, you know, if Joshua was a creator and he's doing his own streams, whether it's the Great British Bake Off or a makeup tutorial or an actual video game stream, Anybody that would follow him and come in through under his link, you know, he'll be entitled to a proportion of the revenues that they spend within the platform for the lifetime value of them being a user. So it's not only a tool to engage with the fans, but it's another way for the people to earn money by creating content. Where this is applicable, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, with the billions of hours that have created, with the millions of people that are broadcasting every day, with the hundreds and hundreds of sports matches and esports matches that are taking place 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the applications and the Fanify technology, uh, you know, the low hanging fruit for us all in see is esports. Uh, you know, the earliest adopters will be people that are familiar with playing along on, on content through their phones, through their desktops. But that's easily uh, transferable to the sports community as well. And beyond that, you know, we've announced partnerships earlier in the summer where we have access to uh, some scripted programming, some award shows as well. And, you know, whether you're sitting at home making predictions uh, with an embedded stream in the platform or you're looking at it as a second screen fan engagement device, you know, this is readily applicable to live events as well. And uh, what Josh will show you when we're able to create our predictions, we're only limited by the creative creativity of what the community can create when they're using our platform. So uh, you know, we can touch hopefully billions of people and uh, make a meaningful impact. 
So before I hand it off to Josh, really what it is, it's all about community-based predictions on top of what we can pull out of data streams, right? If I'm creating a stream in my basement, I'm not broadcasting the data stream that we can pick up. What we've built is an enterprise grade backend where we can go in, create events, assign moderators, invite friends, have it pushed into a newsfeed within our platform, create uh, predetermined uh, pop-up questions, and then reconcile those on the fly. Uh, on that note, I'm going to hand it off to Joshua, uh, who will walk you through the presentation of the platform, and then I'll come back with some uh, closing remarks, and we're happy to jump into some questions. So, Josh, take it away, please. Oh, stop my share. There we go. Okay. Um, here we have the Fontify system. Uh, the Fontify system is, as David said, it's an AI-driven platform that's suitable for pretty much absolutely anything from games to live TV shows and even my own makeup tutorials, as mentioned earlier. You can log in and sign up um, via different integratable methods, such as Google, Facebook, and Twitch, all of which giving us a little bit more information to help personalize for the player a little bit better, um, work on and obviously explore different um, deeper integrations of these systems later. And then there is, of course, also the email sign up. Now, when you sign up, you will initially be invited to sort of personalize your profile, select your favorite games, um, take a look at a calendar and so on to help you set up events and just to get you engaged with the platform. Um, just to dive into what that will look like. When you select the games, you essentially come here. And this is, we're, we're starting to bespoke this towards the game directions. You'll see this a bit at the moment. Here we have even just these three, out of these three games, League of Legends, Counter-Strike and Dota. Let's say I don't feel like Dota because I'm a LOL fan and I'll always include Counter-Strike. We've got a bit of Riot and a bit of Valve, the two companies that are obviously involved here. We can click next. Um, and obviously in this environment, I'm driven straight into, let's go and choose my next games. But just within that signup process, what we would normally see, because we will come back to the screen, is of course also a calendar. The calendar where I can go and see what games and events are being held, both, both um, curated automatically by our system and those held by the individual user. Because we do actually make it so any user can fantify any, any event, no matter what say even me logged in now, I want to go and create an event. I'm going to call it the Fantify string um, or let's call it whatever presentation, presentation. This is a presentation, presentation is the name of the title. Under the title, I go and I'm doing this on Twitch. I'll have an exact URL. I choose my, my date, I choose a time, I choose a duration, a reminder for me and everybody else. I can choose managers. I can invite all the friends I have, you know, that obviously we can get from people we've, we've partnered with on this platform. And again, those deeper integrations we talked about earlier. And then I can even add my own custom predictions. Will Joshua's accent get too thick to understand during this call? That's a fun prediction. Um, will someone choke? <laughs> I start to have a little bit too, too much fun with this myself. Will Joshua have hair by the age of 40? Alas, who knows? You can literally go anywhere with this. Obviously, I just click X. All those predictions will obviously remain in there. And I can go and create said event. Obviously, making it my event with my moderators and my entire environment. So not only can I go and join curated mass events, I can even go and create smaller events for just me and my friends, or indeed go and find events that we're not curating and also host on this platform, sort of delivering that, that sort of path forward in the long term. Now to go back to sort of more our curated events here, and obviously everything else we have, we do have a whole host of different options. I'm going to go back to the game because let's go and say we want to watch the next stream. And how are we gamifying this just for everyone going forward? When I go and I select my games, the system automatically picks up from all of the data servers we're integrated with, all of the upcoming games, what's in progress now, what's coming up, how long they are in the future. Obviously there's an in-progress Dota game. There's some games coming up in 41 minutes. You've got ones later. I'm based here in Northern Ireland. 
UK slash Ireland, depending on who you ask. Um, so there's nothing on for a little bit of a while, but there's someone in 40 minutes. I can, of course, see my progress level, but this is, again, fully adaptable. I can show team stats here later. We can integrate with that. We have, obviously, a difficulty setting, which, you know, is definitely a lot more suited for um, all of those sort of events, especially if I'm holding an event or challenging my friends or something like the Great British Bake Off. I can choose the amount of questions I want to answer. Some events will have a fixed amount of questions or be set by the event host, et cetera, et cetera. So for now, Vital this is actually a good game. Vitality.b versus Game Ward. That is a good League of Legends game. I'm going to go and be involved in that. You know, sadly, I'll be on a call in 40 minutes, but alas, that's what happens. We get into this sort of system now the game's not on so what i want to sort of show here um is the we have an option to go and choose different predictions will the team have total assists over 200 will the losing team have deaths over 90.9 yes no this system and what you see here is fully sort of designed for anyone you can imagine this could be as, as david says swipe left swipe right it could be the bake off is someone going to burn a cake you know is truly going to have cooler glasses next time um so on so on you can even start to play do we think the majority of people on this stream like the glasses yes if you do no if you don't you can literally go any direction with this he adapted a little bit more for gamers we can go even a little bit more in depth and just to show you what we can sort of layer on top of our, our platform that we've made here. If we're going specifically and as we push specifically into esports without changing any of the platform, just some UX changes and, and using our data and all of our integrations a little bit better. You can see sort of what we can do here is we can have a set amount of questions, prove the UX a bit, pull in those stats from each of the team, show all of your challenges here allow somebody to go and choose yes or no to each question despite what they are league of legends for those who don't know it is essentially a a game where you have five people against five people there are three lanes there are towers in each lane and the objective is to kind of go and kill like a a crystal at the end you're defending this crystal so questions could be anything from is you know x faker going to destroy the first tower will acrylis kill the dragon power up first you know so and so and so on so on so on now what happens is when you go and before you join this you are put into a team especially if we're talking about bespokeness for esports and sports um in this case we're in team x faker and when we're answering all these questions, we're, we're answering them and we're, we're joining our team and making these predictions. At the end of choosing all of your questions, you will see how many people sort of answered what. You know, so many, maybe 90% of people thought that we wouldn't get the first tower. But I said yes. And I'm sitting there going, oh no, they know something I don't. So we actually give people uh, sort of the opportunity to spend some energy and change their answer here if they want to get in behind the entire team, giving the team the opportunity to spend some energy and sort of make a collaborative effort to get behind the same questions. Now, as we continue on the system, obviously here, as you can see, because it is so bespoke platform at the moment to suit absolutely anything, we have that friends one we discussed earlier, a list of challenges that could be set by anyone, literally in, in the case of the Great British Bake Off, I don't know who bought the rights over in the USA, but it could be Channel 4, for example, could literally set all of their own challenges. Like, this is what we want people to try and achieve. This is the questions we want. This is the sort of things we're looking for. So they can, they can engage and choose different engagement points for their own audience. In this case, we're going to click Global. We want to take on the globe with every single prediction we've made here. Uh, we sort of continue. And the last we go to the stream, like obviously it doesn't start for 41 minutes. So we've, we've spoke this now. I've sort of got this version for you here that we can use for now. Now the stream's not on. For sports and esports, we get into this environment. Now, obviously, as you know, we are in a team. I'm in Team X Faker, right? Which is made up for now, to be quite clear with you all. But we're in Team X Faker and we're taking on Team Areckles. Now, with this, we can do a multitude of things. Right. We're first of all, we're standing here. We've got a chat box to engage with other fans within our team and the other team. You can see what team they are, are on based on the color. Obviously, there'll be different colors from admins, moderators, the event hosts, and so on. You do immediately get a leaderboard, like the lead board for everyone, um, showing both the top predictor, as in 
who is the fan who is answering the most questions right? Like, which is the fan? Who is the smartest? Like, who who is the king fan? Like, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of what we're trying to accomplish here is trying to bring that, especially with the way the world's going, that traditional super fan spirit. You know, you're talking a bunch of friends down in what we would call like the pub or the bar or whatever, who are trying to say, who knows this? This is the problem. This is the best player. This is the best player. Let's go and get that on a leaderboard. And like they find that out once and for all. That's the predictor one. The top supporter is more like the person who's spending the most energy, who's shouting the hardest, who's buying the most multipliers, who's asking the most questions, so on. Now, what those questions are, and to be quite clear again, if you are watching a stream and you could imagine this, I used to actually be a, a Twitch streamer myself and I actually used to cast games. So one of the ones I did was a Comic-Con game down in Dublin in the Aviva Stadium. And it can be a bit tedious when you're streaming a game and there's nobody talking to you. There's no one even, no one's talking to you because there's not much engagement to be made. I'm sitting here, I have to cast the game. The people playing have to play the game. So everyone watching on Twitch right now has nothing to do but watch on their computer like it's traditional television. If I went to a live event arena, say I went to Barcelona for Galatasaray, in March there, the stadium's absolutely crazy. People have flares, people are screaming. The Galatasaray guys are really shouting out loud. You know, that's the spirit we need to bring on into these games, especially with esports. You're not really getting that in an, in an arena often. And it can be pretty hit and miss whether guys who play esports want to go to arenas most of the time. It's almost a niche within the gaming circuit. I'll say as a, a very avid gamer, like that is a niche within a niche of gamers. Here, however, we have that game for the fans. So not only do we have the score for the actual teams, and this could be anyone, this could be Barcelona and Galatasaray. This could be Clermont versus Toulouse. This could be, you know, the Maple Leafs versus LA Kings, probably mixing the ice hockey with the basketball there, but alas. Um, and it, the same thing will be applicable between both esports and sports, which is sort of the beauty. We're both bringing in that game to the esports guys, but it, as we see them pick it up, we improve the system, very easy to transition to sports. Now, within this, not only can you chat, ask questions, try and be the best, you do have your abilities. In all games, you normally would have abilities. Now, the abilities are, the first one is asking a challenger question or a prediction. So some, obviously we have both events held by people, but we have curated events through the system. This almost enables viewers to moderate the entire thing themselves because we allow the viewers of each team to ask the other team a question so i could click this spend some energy again that i unlock by being engaged more i can also pay to top up my energy bar but it allows me to ask a question and by asking that question obviously i'm not going to ask something completely ridiculous because my objective of my team is to ask questions i think the other team are going to get wrong because if they get it wrong or they don't answer they're going to lose points for their team so I'm going to ask what seems very logical or the things that I think is the best question to ask at that time. Now, let's go and say in League of Legends, which you're watching here, we actually ask the question of, well, who's going to get the third tower? And this is after the first tower. And everybody's like, Do, you know, yes, I think my team, I, yes, I think our Eccles will come back and get the third tower. Comes to the third tower, they know they're wrong. We do also allow and sort of like more of a defense status or an attacking status where someone can break that question. So not only can it be asked, if it looks like it's all going down, they can break that question for the same cost that they would, you know, at a greater cost, much greater cost, obviously asking, but allow them to defend their team. Likewise, we have a point multiplier that you can buy for your team. The team you're watching can also earn this for your team. You know, if they get a, an ace, which is when a, one person kills all five of the enemy team, you get a multiplier, like the team helps its fans out. But at the same time, we allow you to spend energy and upgrade your points multipliers, meaning every question you answer, you get more points. Likewise, we allow people to break this, creating that circle, that really sort of like, yes, go us. No, don't go you. Yes, us, not you. Yes, us, not you. We, we really are trying to build that. It's an entire sort of mission of building anticipation for who's going to win to encourage the action and then reward people. Obviously, they're all fighting for that reward at the end. You know, when everybody's there. And again, here's the last one that, that we have for our MVP, which is cheering for your team. You know, when you're watching a professional sports game and you're in a stadium, 
everybody's cheering. There has to be a reason for that. And it is, it's because they want to feel involved. They want to feel like they're motivating the team. And that's the point of cheering for a team. Now, this is especially important because imagine it's in the final four minutes, your team's very far behind and you're not gonna get it by asking questions. You're in an environment where cheering a team is simply spending energy to get your fans points. You know, your team might be winning, but your fans aren't. That's not good enough for the fans. Let's cheer, 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 spend energy up the points. Likewise, we allow that to be combated. And if you've seen something like TikTok battles, this is like the only feature they would have at the moment where streamers go up against each other and there's people just throwing donations, et cetera, at them to try and make their favorite streamer win. We're trying to sort of encompass something much greater than that. Likewise, so here we do allow teams to sort of go on the offensive again, or the fans of the team to go on the offensive and say, break that cheer. For you press this button, you're going to spend as much energy as the other team cheered for the past three minutes, but you're going to block them for two minutes. By doing this, the other team can't cheer. Now, the beauty of this is you can do this every three minutes. So there will always be a minute left open where the team can cheer. So that team's going to be sitting there going, when this minute opens, I need to cheer. They don't know if someone's going to break it, but they need to cheer like there's no tomorrow. Creating again, just these, this sort of back and forth loop over a variety of abilities that we can play with. We're going to start to perfect and move going forward to allow people and fans to engage, not just with the stream, but with each other and to bring that stadium-esque effect of, right, I'm not just sitting here watching Twitch, probably eating M&Ms or whatever the heck, um, saying, okay, right, this is, I, I've got X-Faker first the Reckles here. I've watched it, you know, to be quite clear, like the engagement can be all over the place, especially in esports at the moment, even though it's going through the roof. I'm now sitting here going, no, I am gaming. Like I am gaming while I watch this. I am, I am just as engaged as I would be in a real stadium. And we bring that impact over, especially if you consider the fact that you can also correlate some of this with your own private friends as well, et cetera, et cetera. But going back to the actual system, which is timed me out here, obviously. As I click back. We are in the home page, which of course everything has its developments, but we can see the upcoming events that we would have signed up for, all the upcoming games, an ability to buy energy. And again, just to be very clear, we would have a whole host of abilities. If we don't want to buy energy, we can claim it. We can sort of do different challenges by buying items, making challenges, having events, challenging a friend, inviting friends. There's a lot of ways to get energy as well. You either essentially get rewarded with energy by spending money to buy energy or by just engaging and helping us with our expand our platform. But once you're done, and to be very clear, there's sort of a, a reward to all of this, which is there are leaderboards. And these leaderboards, once you finish the game, and this is a very important aspect, so I'm backtracking a bit because I sort of forgot this. Um, you finish playing the game, you're sort of done, right? I support Barcelona in this case. I'm always watching the Barcelona games with Fandify. Let's take this into consideration. I want to be the biggest Barcelona fan. So in this leaderboard, we sort of create an environment where there's several different leaderboards, and that can be person who's asking the most questions, person who's getting the most points right on, on anything, right? And we can have overall leaderboards, both daily, weekly, monthly, seasonal, but we can also have team leaderboards. The leaderboards literally bespoke to Barcelona or the biggest phase leaderboard. So that person can always sit there and be compelled to be like, well, I want to be the biggest phase fan. I want to be the biggest ninjas and pajamas fan. I want to be the biggest like bad news Eagles fan. There's a whole host of teams I could go on for a while or the biggest Madrid fan, Chelsea fan, whatever. So not only are they in an environment here now where they're just watching their esports or sports games on TV. They're competing to be, well, the biggest fan themselves. And that kind of compels people to go forward because obviously different teams could then go and turn around and recognize people. And a lot of people want to be recognized by that team. And obviously the kudos of walking back in with your friends or meeting them later and saying, well, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm the biggest fan now. Check, out, check me out and Fandify. It creates that sort of enclosed environment again. Now, just to walk through here, some of the usability features as well. We do, of course, have that calendar. The leaderboard is discussed. 
my matches being lipped through matches I played recently, how I scored, how I got on, how that's impacted me on the leaderboard, the challenges that I've got and that I've completed, the events that I'm actually holding for my friends or for anything else, the matches that are coming up um, that I want to play for or that I've signed up to play or just all the matches coming up. This is just that whole match page we've seen before a little more coherently. The ability to have friends on friends list, obviously we want to bring that all into the system. So you can see how you rank against your friends, obviously invite your friends. We've integrated obviously with plenty of systems. We create that ability to sort of like, you know, invite your friends and be their friends on Fandify, find out what friends you have on Fandify, et cetera. News, because here's the thing. If you sort of think about this as well, we are now sitting in an environment with Fandify where faces turned around and they've done something that's caused a whole bunch of people to cheer. They went, one guy went and got a, a triple kill with an op or done something else, something amazing. And what happens there is we start to get fed all of this data. So we get in, we sort of get this environment where when we're when an actual team is playing, we can take a look at what people are talking about. We could take a look at what, what people are cheering for, spending their energy to endorse their team, clap for their team, what makes the other team, you know, block things, like what, what scares the other team the most, and actually get all of this data to say, what is getting your fans hyped? Like, what makes your fans really excited? What makes them cheer more for you? What makes them like you? And that all gets saved in our system, and we are able to pro like provide that as feedback to the team. So not, not only are we creating this Fantify system for the fans, even for the team as well, and the obviously the creator, but for the teams as well and the creators and everyone else having the events, we can say, this is what makes what, what, not what makes people like you, but this is what gets people hyped. This is what makes them spend more, like more, do more, sort of follow you more, engage with you more. This is what we've seen. And that will work over an array of things because at the same time, with that neural network processing, all of the questions within that AI, obviously neural net, like network processing of like the AI we're talking about here is, is sort of like the way it, it, the, the AI we have is sort of thinks like a, a human wants to think, it develops the same way. So it sort of learns that same sort of pattern and pattern. And that pattern is obviously something we can encompass and say, this is what people think about you if you play games on this day or whatever, et cetera, or if you lose here, or if you lose by this much, this is how angry people get. This is how much traction you lose. This is how much winning is important to you, so on and so forth. And we can turn that all into news on top of getting other news. It's obviously quite obvious, but you know, a mixture of both ongoing news to sort of keep people in, in one enclosed system, or obviously encourage them back into our system, but at the same time, for a way for us to take some of our information and share it with that greater landscape and long scope of people. Obviously, we know games. This is where I can choose my games, see the next game, jump right in. The store where I can go spend energy um, for a host of different things on partnerships or whatever else we can get integrated into the store, or indeed buy energy themselves. And of course, you can see the ability here where we're going to have to be able to switch between esports, sports, whatever else. Now, with him that being said, um, I'm going to hand back over to David now. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Bear with me, David. Yep, thank you, Josh. Stop sharing your screen, I'll start sharing mine again. There we are. So yeah, thank you for that in-depth uh, overview of the platform. It's really exciting to see you describe it every single time. Again, you know, the whole goal is to ultimately to watch together, to play together, you know, bring that live event experience into the palm of your hand, to your mobile device, to your couch, to really, you know, facilitate that convergence we see of the different types of content, uh, just becoming agnostic of where you watch them. Obviously, numerous benefits for fans and content creators, which you've touched upon in a lot of detail. And obviously, you know, we're the team that's going to be executing it, you know, uh, I'm very happy to have Josh join the team amongst uh, some of his illustrious experience uh, was building out a uh, one of the fastest growing uh, free game free gaming systems uh, in Germany numerous years ago. Uh, he was part of the leadership team that grew it from literally from zero to 200 million euros in revenue in a very short time. Uh, so we're very excited to have him bring that knowledge and you know, incorporate it into Fandify built upon the platform uh, that Stan and Chris have developed over the years and deployed in all those mission critical industries that really allows us to be specialists in systems integrations to plug in with all these different platforms. Uh, 
you know, my, my background being in capital markets and business development, I think we've assembled a fantastic team uh, that's going to uh, really show the fruits of our labor very, very soon. And that's going to be thanks really, again, to, you know, uh, the strength of our advisory board and other people helping us out on an active basis. Um, you know, you know, we mentioned League of Legends, obviously, you know, esports, some of our viewers here today are more or less familiar with esports. But for example, Mr. Yunwa Fai, uh, who's on our advisory board literally since the day I joined the company, he's the uh, CEO of GameFi. Uh, they're the exclusive broadcaster of League of Legends, uh, which is ultimately owned by Tencent. Uh, in China, uh, you know, well over 100 million viewers uh, who are watching it on TV through their platform. You know, uh, Neil Duffy, you know, is working with the top non-professional esports tournament companies in North America. Uh, we just added Renjin Bao to our advisory board. Uh, he's the director of business development at Tencent in America itself. Uh, he's responsible for the business development relationships for Tencent Sports. Uh, Tencent Sports is the exclusive broadcaster of the NFL, the NBA the NHL, tennis, golf, F1 in China. He works with the commissioners of each of those leagues. Uh, so we're, you know, he was one of the first people that we showed the demonstration to and uh, shortly thereafter he joined our advisory board. So we're very excited to start going through his Rolodex. Uh, you know, I, I touched upon the other advisors in previous presentations, which are posted on our website. So I'll save you guys some time. I'm sure everyone has a lot of questions going forward. Um, you know, again, our, our goal is to represent all fans, all types of content. I'll go into some of my conclusion remarks. Um, you know, when you just consider all of the, what really excites me, honestly, is all of the different types of content creators and viewers that we can impact with our technology, uh, right across from Titch, Tick, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. You know, we're talking about billions of people, billions of hours of content, and uh, we've built a system that anyone can access anywhere in the world and facilitate you know, the fandification uh, of their content uh, by themselves. Uh, the revenue streams, which I talked about, I'm sure there'll be some more specific questions there. You know, now in terms of our market positioning, you know, NFT rewards are in our roadmap. You know, it's very difficult to look for what some comparables are. You know, as I've said in some of my previous presentations, there's nothing new with, uh, you know, prediction games, right? You used to be able to go down to your local pub, you know, pick out the four winners of the basketball games that night, win the pound of chicken wings, you know, then that went to a mobile app where you'd compete with the, with the pubs or bars in a hundred mile radius and so forth. So some of the prediction games that we see out there, it's very basic and binary. You know, you choose from four or six or 20 pre-canned predictions, you know, win, lose, draw, over, under. This is all just traditional wagering type of predictions. Really, where what you can see with what we've built in, in terms of the user interface, you know, we're, we're able to capture a much larger audience demographic than that traditional, um, you know, pull mechanism to get someone making predictions to pull them into a wager. And you know, when you consider that only thirty percent of Super Bowl uh, viewers actually place a wager on the Super Bowl, you know, what is the NFL doing to engage with the other seventy percent of them? Right. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity for us. You know, when, when you look at Discord, which turned down a you know, $15 billion buyout offer from Microsoft a year ago. I think they've been revalued at $10 billion. They have 100 million monthly active users. They're an agnostic chat platform that started with gamers and obviously has branched out to other forms of content. I think that's a fair comparable uh, and uh, a good marker for us with what we're building with Fandify. We want to be an agnostic, and we're going to be the agnostic prediction engine for all types of stream content, esports, sports any type of content creator. So I think there's a tremendous opportunity in front of us. Uh, you know, where we stand uh, with our launch plans, what are we doing? You know, we have uh, some of our uh, partners that we're going to be uh, launching with imminently on the call today. So thank you for joining. Um, so we're, we're, our business to consumer and our business to business plans are um, on schedule. Uh, you know, we're in discussions with a group that's got several dozen events coming up in the fall. So it's, it's a question of what do we do to uh, activate with their brands properly to really close that feedback loop where someone is engaging with the content, they're engaging with the sponsor behind the team and, and really give them an opportunity to not only interact with the team, with their favorite streamers, but with the sponsors behind those streamers and really create a holistic uh, experience for them. Um, you know, as we prove ourselves in esports. You know, we have some people in the sports industry, as I mentioned, who are who are taking a close look at us. Uh, so obviously the barriers to entry is sports a little bit higher. 
well, significantly higher, frankly, when it comes to broadcast rights and so forth. But again, you know, we're not dependent on streams, uh, on streaming data. We're not dependent on broadcast rights. So whether we're able to embed uh, that content in our platform or use our platform as a second screen device or embed our technology into that particular broadcast partner, you know, we're able to start and grow organically with the platform as it is, you know, we're bringing on moderators and so forth to enrich that fan experience. Uh, but, you know, we're very excited to uh, be live in the early fall. Uh, and, you know, we'll have some news in the next week or two in terms of when we'll be opening betas and, and have that process. So um, we're finally in the starting gates. It's a very exciting time for the company. Uh, in terms of, of our capital structure and so forth, uh, we've got about 82 million shares outstanding. I know there are a number of questions with our financial position. Uh, our Q3 financials are going to be coming out, I believe, at the end of next month. Uh, our last financial showed 2.6 all figures Canadian dollars. So excuse me. Um, uh, we had $2.6 million uh, in, in the Treasury at the end of Q2. Our burn rate is about $210,000 a month Canadian dollars. Uh, so, you know, we've got so a fair amount of runway. Uh, we've got 11 million. 11 million warrants priced at 10 cents, which can be very close, should be exercised by the end of the year. And another batch of warrants uh, priced at 36 cents. Uh, that'll bring another seven and a half million dollars in the early spring. Uh, so we're well cashed up. Uh, we've got a very strong opportunity pipeline in front of us that um, is coming to fruition as we speak. Uh, fantastic partners, a fantastic team. And uh, we're really excited to uh, get the platform going and uh, fandify the world, as I say. So uh, on that note, um, you know, I'll leave up some of our summary points here. I'm, I'm happy to uh, take any questions that uh, our audience may have. And uh, Will, if there's any questions, please fire away. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks for a very interesting and insightful uh, presentation and demonstration. And uh, as David said, uh, we will take questions at, the, at this point. If you're interested in asking a question and log into the Zoom app or web platform, uh, you can uh, ask the question directly in that module. Uh, so there have been uh, a few questions coming through as we were speaking. I think the first question, um here is uh maybe maybe josh can handle can this uh can this work in live events and if so you know what would that experience be like well the it, it does actually work in live events there's a double prong to this obviously as i mentioned before we want to bring that stadium feel online but at the same time if you go to a stadium, you know, how long is it if, if for people, and it might sound hard to believe, but if people are getting, in fact, take a look at Barcelona, they suffer to fill their stadium nowadays. Like, here's the thing, people sometimes don't like to just sit there for 90 minutes, especially if the alcohol is starting to come off the shelves, especially in places like Barcelona. So they need something else to keep them engaged or anywhere else for that matter. So imagine an environment where you enter a, an arena, that sports team sitting there and there's there's a big qr code you know join your favorite team here's the qr code for one team here's the qr code for the other team join that team on fandify back then you obviously get that stream you don't even need that stream someone can create it it can just be what you're watching live in front of you but if we've got a partnership obviously which is better with that sports team or that actual arena the the live broadcast or whatnot of that game can be there so you're sitting in an environment now where you're sitting in your seat you're able to watch the game in front of you you're able to compete with people in the arena you're able to compete with people at home you're still involved you're able to watch it all up close and get the stats of what's going on in the game there you know like it would be this would be the five steps on from like buying that little referee earpiece so you can listen to the referee while you're watching the game you know why are we still there like we should be 10 times further so of course this uh, is 100 percent adaptable to be, to work in life live events as well especially in esports as well as again what being that caster in the aviva stadium um there's nothing more frustrating uh than looking up and seeing people twiddle thumbs and get bored while you're casting the game and i like to think i'm not too boring <laughs> but alas <laughs> Just does the next question is uh, does the customer have to pay to play? Uh, no, no. Just to answer that very quickly, like I, I have a, a background from a free to play industry as well. Uh, I don't like that term free to play so much. It's free to play 2.0. There's a lot of ways, different ways to put this. 
but uh, people are paying for their convenience. They're paying to give more to their, their, their teams, essentially. If they don't want to earn that energy. Um, definitely, you'll find a lot of people just prefer to pay than wait five minutes for that energy bar to unlock. They will pay to be the guy, to be that John Wayne who's cheering more than anyone else. Like we've seen that, you see that on Twitch with the nations, you see that on TikTok with people giving lions and universes, if you know what they are, but they're donating thousands of dollars just to be that guy who's like, okay, wow, you're the biggest supporter. Um, I very much take the approach to these sort of platforms that it is a lot easier to get 2 million free users and to get 2% of them to pay for a premium experience than it is for us to just, to just simply get 40,000 paying users. We want the, the actual viewers to be the content as much as they are playing with each other. So we're trying to keep this platform open to everyone. So it's free to play. <laughs> Fantastic. Next question. How many people can play at once? Limitless. There's no, there's no reason why you can't have every 80,000 people in the, in the Bernabeu or the Aviva or whatnot. Name another very famous American football stadium. They can all play. Yeah, look, uh, the goal, um, you know, not to speak from a technical server capability, uh, you know, the largest event, the League of Legends World Finals, has over 130 something million people viewing it. You know, so our goal is to allow that many people to play concurrently, right? So that's just a question of server space and so forth. Um, frankly, that's a good problem for us to have. So uh, the end goal of the platform is to be a global platform that can host millions of people on it for thousands of events that are occurring a day. Uh, as you know, with respect to the statistics, you have 1.2 million people alone streaming on Twitch every single day. So you know that ranges anywhere from you know two viewers per stream uh, to hundreds of thousands, right? So we want we've built a system. Uh, that can facilitate bandification of all of those streams. Um, so I'm sure if we have problems with having 100 million people on our platform simultaneously as a daily active user, uh, we'll be able to find some capital to support uh, the infrastructure required to service all those users. Great, thank you very much. Um, Next question is, how does Fandify plan to capitalize on the upcoming sports season? So, uh, like I said, our initial partnerships intentions are with um, esports, uh, but, you know, we have sports data feeds coming into the platform. So, and we have people that are in various high levels of position in the sport industry that are watching our immediate steps. So, you know, it, it really going back to our earlier slide, you have to cr crawl, walk, run, as with all <laughs> business growth initiatives in life. Uh, you know, our plan is to execute a seamless user experience uh, as we scale from esports to sports. So we have fantastic people around us that will hopefully partner with us, guide us through that process. Um, you know, if you're talking about what's our advertising budget to, you know, advertise at sporting events and so forth, um, I think what's important for us to do is to demonstrate the uniqueness and the uh, engagement on our platform and then scale with the marketing budget from there, right? Uh, like I said, we only raised 5 million Canadian dollars uh, back in 2021. So we're very mindful of our treasury. Uh, we're very mindful of the capital market situation that we find ourselves in over the summer. Hopefully that bounces back. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we're proceeding cautiously and, uh, as soon as we see a spark, you know, we'll throw some gas on it. Great. Thank you, David. Uh, someone is asking for an update on the Malta license. Yes. The Malta license, one of the largest components of that is the marketing plan, right? They want to know how you're going to be marketing, what your specific marketing plans are for specific countries as well. And because each simple, each specific country has specific marketing guidelines, uh, similar to you know what we saw with um, you know regulated marijuana industry in Canada, obviously now in the U.S. as well, tobacco. So the very specific plans. Our our primary intention was always to build out an all ages platform uh, that could catch a broad audience, and then you know we could see who we could transition from what specific market over into that platform. 
So, you know, we've just brought Josh on, who's been helping us now with uh, all of these various sophisticated gamification elements. The next step is to start marketing this platform and developing, well, we've already developed a marketing plan for this platform, but see what some of the traction is within those uh, markets individually. And then we can go back and say to the multi-gaming authority, you know, here's what we're going to do specifically, uh, because it is a tier one license. They do go through with it with detail. Uh, you know, we don't want to put something forward to them that when it comes back to us and say, well, you said you were going to do this. Now you've done this. Uh, because what we have to do is we have to put compliance teams in place, com sorry, compliance teams in place that require legal oversight. So, uh, you know, again, in, in the effort to preserve our chair, treasury and, you, and in the best use of capital is to devote all the resources to developing the marketing plan for this. And then we'll go back to the multi-game license. We've already started assembling a lot of the documentation required, but I think again, given where we see the astronomical rise in the customer acquisition costs on the wagering side, that I think uh, the larger opportunity, frankly, for Fandify uh, is in uh, the system that you see today. Great, thank you. Uh, some of them well, might be just worth reiterating. Uh, uh, when will the platform be released? Uh, we're talking days days and weeks not months and quarters so very very imminently uh we'll have some news in the next week or two on what that date will be but um you know we've got payment processing set up already uh we just have to go through some testing and then uh, we'll be live Fantastic. it's been a long time coming but uh i can see from one of the questions in the q a what we've really built here um, it's, it's not a basic prediction game. This is an all-encompassing, uh, sophisticated enterprise-grade platform that facilitates predictions across millions of touch points. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to really congratulate our technical team uh, for building what we what you saw today on, you know, what in effect was just a couple million Canadian dollars. So, uh, I'm very proud of our progress so far, uh, and I'm just even more excited to have it live and to have it in, you know, our users' hands. So it's. Um, a long time coming, but it's a very exciting time. Very impressive. We're we're pressing up against time here, so uh, let me just see. The last question we would take is: uh, Can you sort of provide um, milestones that investors should be uh, looking for uh, coming up here in the near term, and uh, you know, relative degree of confidence in in the, in the timeline? Well, we'll be one hundred percent going live, um, like I said, with within a matter of weeks. Um, we'll be announcing some partnerships uh, within, you know, back on the original slide here. I'm sorry. Some partnerships uh, within Q3 and Q4. Uh, we expect to be live. You know, there, there's a number of large esports events in the fall uh, that we, we're going to be live for. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to be having revenues, right? As soon as we're live, people will be able to go in and spend money. So as much as I want the user base to grow, you know, we're going to start recognizing revenues by the end of the year. Um, that, those are my number one goals. Uh, I, I'd like to secure some additional capital going back to uh, the original question. What are we doing to attack the sports industry? Um, you know, it's a technology company. We need to have a marketing budget. Um, so, you know, I want some much strong performance with the company, which hopefully drive the stock price for all shareholders and potential shareholders. At the end of the day, we're looking to build value for, uh, everybody associated with the company. So uh, users, revenues, and growth in that order, top priorities. Oh, well, thanks again, David and Josh. That was, that was very interesting and very informative. And thanks everyone for joining today's webinar. And as mentioned, today's webinar recording will be soon made available on Fanify's website. If you have any additional questions that have not been addressed on the webinar, please feel free to email us at fandify at rbmilestone.com. Again, that is fandify at rbmilestone.com. Thanks again, and you are free to disconnect. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Have a great day. Appreciate your time.